Hi everyone and welcome to another postural alignment session with me, Jo Andrews. If you've not joined along before, I am um, a postural alignment specialist. I'm trained with the Egoscu Institute and it's a really simple method of realigning your main um, loading joints, which we call our shoulders, hips, knees and ankles, so that your body can move and operate in a really balanced way. Uh, the body's designed to um, work evenly side to side both right and left and front to back so if you've noticed something about your posture that you're kind of not quite sure about or you get repeated niggles um, then you're in the right place today it's not an exercise class but it's a really good preparation for all moving it like brushing your teeth it's that kind of maintenance um, work that we do together today i wanted to share a really specific egoscue sequence uh, for people that suffer with headaches and neck tension. So if that's you, um, this is really going to benefit you today. Um, I know I get quite a lot of neck tension from working at a computer for long periods of time. And even we spend a lot of time on our phones these days, don't we? Looking down, head down. So whatever you, uh, whatever might be causing that tension or, or those headaches, then really let's hope that this does the trick. Okay, what you're going to need today though is a little bit, um, of equipment, stuff that you can find around the house. So I'm using today a couple of cushions or blocks here and one big flat book or cushion. So I could use a couple of cushions and a big cushion. Um, I just happen to have a couple of these blocks handy or I could use a couple of block, a couple of books underneath one big flat book or cushion. What I want to do is create a surface that we can place our bodies on to put our bodies in certain positions to help alleviate that tension that might cause um, us to have headaches. So let's start though against a wall. So I'm going to grab yet another cushion. <laughs> Use a lot of cushions in these sessions and come against a wall just to start off. I'm just going to change my camera very, very slightly. Hopefully I won't lose you. Haven't. It's good. And then we're just going to, and you can't see my face, but that's not important. What is important is that you can see the, the lower part of my body here. So my heels are against the wall. I've got my cushion handy. In fact, I want to place that between my thighs here. So it, it, it doesn't have to be, you know, the perfect size or shaped cushion. But what I want it to do is just to create some um, energy and some activity in that lower part of your body. So what I'm doing here is I'm just gently and lightly pressing my inner thighs against that cushion. I don't want the cushion all the way back so that it's pressing against my wall. I want it just in between my thighs. You can see that my feet are pointing straight ahead or my toes certainly are and that's absolutely the position that we want to be in as we stand against the wall here just a few minutes i'm going to let my arms settle by the side of my body my heels are against the wall my bottom is against the wall and then i'm just going to let my myself rest here gently against the wall and allow the straightness of this surface or the flatness the, the sort of the uprightness of this surface to start to bring my joints back into alignment and what I mean by that is to have our ankles set underneath our knees set underneath our hips and set underneath our shoulders this is what we want to achieve through our sessions together to help our body work in a really balanced way so I've just got a light pressure on that cushion when you feel like you're happy and you're in the right position you're just going to close your eyes and find some nice deep breaths. And while you're doing that, I'm just going to pop on the comments so that I can see who's joining us today. Hi, Karen. Nice to have you with us. I was just thinking I'm a little bit on my own today. And then I realised I haven't got the comments on. So we've got Karen joining us and I'm sure we'll have a few more familiar names joining us soon. So I'm just allowing my body just to straighten up. That's by having these very, very simple structure or position, if you like, of a wall behind me and a cushion between my thighs. Simple as that. Like can, this, as it on its own, can make a huge difference. So I'm joining you for a couple of last deep breaths. Then we're going to start moving into our moving sequence today. 
How are those bodies feeling? One more deep breath. Fantastic. And then we're moving away from our wall. I can see you again now and back into our space. Okay, so I've got my chair handy today and I've got my little props here. If you've only just joined us, you're going to need morning, Jacqueline. You're going to need a big book or a large cushion and a couple of cushions to prop it up. And I'll show you why. What I do here is I want to make a slant. Can you see? I've got my two, two cushions making my book into a little slant position. Can you see? Just like this. Yeah? So I could use a couple of books underneath that big book, a couple of cushions and a big cushion on top. Whatever you've got, don't let it be, if you don't feel it's quite right, don't let that be a barrier to what we're trying to achieve today. Okay. So I put my feet on against this book here. And I'm going to have a little measure down between my ankle joints, first of all, because position is really important when we're doing these resetting and realignment exercises. So I want to get that bit right. Fist and a half between my ankles, that kind of measurement, one fist that way, one fist that way. Okay. And then between my big toe knuckles, I want to measure one fist width. So just one of a wide fist between those big toes. And then I'm checking down that my feet, outer edges of my feet are well aligned. Okay, so that they're parallel and their toes are pointing straight ahead. Now, com compared to what, where we normally do work on a chair, this is almost like it sends you in the opposite direction of alignment. But you'll, you've got to trust the exercise to know that it's releasing tension in the back of the body to take away those, those elements that might be causing us for our headaches. So my knees are slightly higher than my hips. That's absolutely fine. And I'm actually going to roll down deliberately. I'm going to let the back shrug forward. Okay. My feet are in this really, really intense flexed position. You see, it's really pushing the balls of my feet, the soles of my feet up. And I'm just going to let my arms hang by my side. I'm deliberately slumped. Okay. Deliberately slumped. Nice big breath. Just want you to get a feel for that position and really get the whole of your, the sole of your foot, I really want you to feel the whole of it really fully connected with whatever it is that you've got underneath. So it might be that book, it might be that cushion. Okay. When you're ready to, and don't worry if your cushion or your book moves a little bit, it's absolutely fine. I just want you to raise up onto your toes, don't worry if your book if your book moves, and then back onto your heels. Okay, I'm just going to come up, and I'm going to go back. And I'm just going to keep this movement working. I'm really lifting my heels as high as I can. My body is slumped. That's absolutely fine. So if you've just joined in and thinking, Jo don't, normally doesn't sit on her chair like this. <laughs> it's a deliberate position for our headache egoscue sequence. Okay, lift and lower. Lift and lower. Just do one more. And then I want you to grab that other cushion that we used against the wall. Just pop it between your thighs. Then you, you set up where your feet is. As it was, you might need to just make sure, adjust it slightly to make sure it's there. I want you to I want you to feel or know that you can do this Igoski work anywhere. You know, we could do it, we could do it on the bus if we had a jumper that we could roll up and pop between our thighs and maybe your handbag underneath um, the chair in front of you. You would never let what you've got available to you stop you from doing the work here. So if you're on a public transport and you've got a bit of a headache, try this little seat. So I'm gently now pressing this cushion between my thighs. I'm still slumped, or I'm letting my pelvis sort of slump under. I'm not, I'm not forcing the body forward. Okay, my chin's parallel to the floor, and here I go. I'm going to lift and lower again. Now with a light pressure on that cushion, lift and lower. Lift and lower. I'm looking forwards here. Lift and lower. 
My arms are relaxed, my belly is relaxed, lift them lower. Check that your feet aren't turning out and that your ball of your big toe is in contact with that buckle cushion all the way through. Lift and lower. Lift. If you've got somebody handy in your household, maybe they could make you a little slant board. <laughs> but a book, a couple of cushions is absolutely fine. Lift and lower. Keep going. Lift and lower. Lift and lower. Lift and lower. Lift and lower. Let your heels drop back, keep that slump position. And then I just want you to squeeze and release that cushion. Squeeze and release. Squeeze and release. Squeeze and release. And remember, if this isn't you at the minute and you don't have a headache or maybe you're prone to migraines, you could try coming back to the recording of this sequence and maybe do it three or four times this week and just see if it makes a difference to your to how you feel, to how your body's feeling this week. Maybe if you know someone who really suffers with migraines or headaches, send them the link to the, the virtual village hall and, and have them try this little sequence. It might just do the trick. Squeeze and release. Squeeze and release. Squeeze and release. Checking that your full foot is against that support, that slant. Squeeze and release. Squeeze and release. Keep going. Nearly there. Don't squeeze the stuffing out of your cushion. Just a light press. Full foot connected to your slant board. Two more. And this is my last one. Okay. Move that cushion to one side, but keep it handy um, for in a moment. And we're going to set our, our slant board up so it's slanting out away from us. Okay, so I'm going to bring your books towards you, pop that book, you might need to bring it a little bit closer to your chair, and you can see now I'm just going to rest my feet on it this way, so I'm, my feet are pointing down and I've got my, my heels are slightly raised, it's going to feel different in your calves here. Again, we're going to use your car cushions in a moment, but I want to measure, get my measurements right first, fist and a half between my knees. Fist and a half between my ankles, one fist width between my big toe knuckles, outer edges of my feet are parallel, I'm still slumped. Okay. I just want to get a feel for that position on my chair. This time we're going to do the opposite, so we lifted heels last time. This time you're just going to lift your toes and you can see with my little makeshift slant board here, my book is moving up and down, that's absolutely fine. Lift and lower, so relax your belly, and don't worry if you've got to get down there and shuffle things back into place if they slip away. Down and lift, down and lift. Really pull those toes back towards you. The sun is coming out here in Windermere today. It's not very warm though. <laughs> down and lift, down and lift, down and lift, down and lift. Okay, so now you've got a feel for that movement. Carefully go and grab your cushion or your jumper or whatever it is you're using. There's that little bit of resistance in between your thighs and you can see that I'm really tempted to, to sit until my pelvis forward. I'm not going to do that. I'm deliberately just letting my body slump today. Okay, so I'm just going to lightly hold that cushion here. Light grip as I lift and I lower. Lift and I lower. Lift and I lower. Lift and lower. How are we doing? How are we doing Jacqueline? Is everybody still squirreling around the house trying to find the, the bits of equipment? <laughs> it's a good idea to have a few cushions um, handy for Egoski. Often we'll use a dressing gown cord or a tie, a chair and a wall. Usually stuff you can find around your living room, um, but it might just be hard, worth having those handy. Down and lift. Down and lift. Down and lift down and lift. Two more. The last one. 
and then let your feet drop into that extended position, that, that position that we started in. And you're just going to squeeze and release that cushion. This is our last little sequence, part of the sequence on our chair. You might feel and find that your body is starting to kind of almost naturally pull itself up, naturally trying to straighten itself. And that's really nice. What we're, we're doing with all of these exercises is coordinating our movement, coordinating and balancing our movement. That's all we're doing in all of the sequences and exercises that we do, putting the joints back where they need to be. And we're asking the body to move so that when it goes and moves away from these positions, it moves in a coordinated and balanced fashion. Squeeze and release. Squeeze and release. And the more awareness we can have of our body and how it's moving, the better. The more connections we will make with our brain and the longer our body will keep these new habits until they become permanent changes, which is what we want. Squeeze and release. Squeeze and release. Let's do three more together. Squeeze, squeeze, and squeeze. Lovely. Move your cushion away. Move your bits and pieces away and come down onto the floor, onto your hands and your knees. I want to take you into a position called static extension. We use a lot in Egoski to help take out rotation in the shoulders and rotation in the hips. And what that rotation means is when our shoulders are a little bit twisted, maybe our hips are a little bit twisted and we're out of alignment and balance. And also it's lovely for releasing tension in the neck, which of course can bring about and cause headaches. So I want to measure fist and a half between my knees, that, that lovely fist, one, one this way, one that direction. And I come onto my hands with a straight elbow. I'm making this sort of square box shape underneath the body, but I'm not going to stay there. But this is almost sort of where I start from in getting getting things lined up. So I'm looking through my knees to check that my feet aren't together, so my feet are nicely distance apart, tops of my feet on the floor. And then when I'm ready to, I want to slide one hand forward about a hand's length. And then I slide the other hand forward about a hand's length. And you can see now I've got this diagonal line from shoulder, elbow and into wrist, okay? Now, all I'm going to do is I want to shift the weight forward so you can see that my shoulders elbows and, and wrists are aligned. Now I've got this diagonal line going down on between my knee and my hip, that's fine. Leave it where it is and then gently just let your shoulder blades drop towards one another. Keep your elbows straight so the movement and the momentum through those shoulders is even. It's a nice straight shoulder and then I'm going to let the head just hang and in this hang position, you take some nice deep breaths, checking that my elbows are nice and straight. If I come at this position with sort of one bent elbow or both elbows bent, I'm bringing and reinforcing any imbalance or any rotation that I might have. I'm, I'm just allowing the body to continue to do that, which, which we want to get out of. Just take your time here, feel what's going on. If you feel like you've been here long enough, then feel free to sit back, sit back towards those heels or come out of the position if it just feels like it's just a few moments too long. I'm gonna stay here for three more deep breaths. allowing my body to sink, it's just encouraging my head and neck to really release as best it can. My third breath done. Gently sit back towards your heels if that's comfortable for you. Not always a comfortable position for everyone, depending on knees and how they're feeling today. And if it's not good for you, Sit on your bottom and we'll be there with you in a moment. Okay, 
grab your chair again for our last position, which is static back. Classic Egoski position to pop you into and a nice one to finish in. So I'm using my chair here and get my bottom up nice and close and pop my legs over my chair or my stool. Or my, you might have just the right sized um, table, little coffee table. Um, that you could use even some sofas are a good height as well but what's important again is, is my position so I want to be supported by a chair or a stool that is that allows my knees to come right above my hips and that and it doesn't allow my knees to flop out to the side so if it's a little bit low you might want to pop something on your chair just underneath that lower part of your legs to get our bottoms nice and close to the chair. We don't want our feet touching the back of any chair. So if that's you and you've settled yourself in, I am sorry, you're gonna have to move the back of your chair to this side so it's not pressing against your feet. The soles of your feet and your ankles and your toes are nice and relaxed and the palms of your hands are gonna be turned to face up. Nice bit of space actually as well at the side of your body so it allows your shoulders, your head, to soften and relax back towards the ground. And if any tension that you might be feeling in your neck, in your head, is coming from your back, and, and it might be that your back's working a little bit unevenly, or there's a, something trapped there, or things aren't quite equal, right to left side in your back muscles. And this position will really help balance those muscles out and the way they hold your body. Take a deep breath when you're all settled in and close your eyes if you have to. Just getting a sense today of where you're at, both physically and emotionally and mentally. Really just being honest and true, like you were given a weather forecast of. Your state, if you like, how you feel. What's the weather forecast? another nice deep breath and in your mind take yourself to a place where the weather is absolutely your favorite type of weather the kind of weather that makes you feel absolutely alive relaxed healthy happy positive The sounds when the weather is like this for you. What's the air smell like? What's the temperature like? What do you wear? What is it that is giving you these feelings of aliveness, wellness, happiness, positivity? Really take yourself. mind started wondering that's absolutely fine so we're going to gently bring it back into your self for a moment take a big deep breath clear the sky and notice if the weather forecast if there's any difference if it changes or not you return back to yourself right now. And 
notice any small changes. And something to note and reflect on before we step into the rest of our day is just as the weather passes through, so do our feelings physically, emotionally, mentally. They are on a journey. They're passing through. They will come to an end. And another something, whatever it might be, will, will come in for us to experience. Know that whatever it is, it is always passing through. Just like the clouds. your eyes when you're ready to let's get back into our Wednesday nice big stretch yawn whatever it is that you need to do to bring yourself back into your day you might even want to stay there in static back if that's feeling like you're just doing the trick today I'm back here again this afternoon at half past two for um, a lovely Fit Steps dance session. So if you fancy tripping the light fantastic this afternoon, come back and join me at half past two. I look forward to seeing you again there. If not, I'll see you next Wednesday, same time, same place, in your living room, in my living room. Until then, take care. Bye, everyone. Thanks for your company.